Welcome to the show, everybody. Joseph Robert, the Fantasy Football Counselor, online here with Tim, the bald guy. What's going on, Tim? Not much, man. How's it going? Good, man. Labor Day is here. We are, what, four four days away from this the season starting or what? Well, it depends on how you want to count it. But yeah, Thursday, we're ready to rock. We're ready to rock, man. I'm beyond excited about this game. We've got the Chiefs versus the Texans. And I want to say, you know, a lot of people have pretty much done their drafts. There's still a couple more people to go. I'm sure a lot of people are doing it tonight. So if you haven't done your draft yet, make sure you guys get the 16-round draft solution. I've linked it here below here on YouTube. Or head on over to the Fantasy Football Counselor. Dot com. It's really going to help you guys. Sleepers, breakout, video training, everything you need with my notes and full mock drafts on this in the 16 round draft solution to help you guys get that edge in your drafts this. Uh, I want you to say this weekend, uh, this evening, I would say. Yeah, I'm, next couple days. And I'm sure a couple more people will be drafting uh, throughout the week as we get closer to Thursday. So I, I'm beyond excited. And of course, guys, head on over to fantasy, the fantasy football council.com. And get fantasy direct, guys. I'm going to be giving you guys my waiver wire picks, optimal DFS plays, everything you need delivered via text to you guys. This is replacing the old elite talent mastermind group at thefantasyfootballcouncil.com. Uh, today, Tim, we're going to be talking about bold predictions, but I want to have an open discussion. I don't want to say, hey, here's top 10 bold predictions. And it's not even a list. Let's just openly talk about things that could potentially happen that are pretty bold. Let's just have an open discussion. Yeah, to me, some of these are going to be like wishful thinking. So I'm going to pick on one guy that I know you love this year and you've just never gotten off of him. So yeah, some of it's kind of fun, but I think it's still plausible. It could happen. Let's put it that way. So who do you got here? Who do you got? What do you have as a bold prediction here? So um, we did a show like this just a little while ago, and I'm going to stick to a couple of mine. So let's just refresh on those. So Hayden Hurst will finish as the top, the top tight end. Wow, that that's really pushing. <laughs> You're assuming that he's going to be the real deal now. I'm, I'm selling him hard. Hayden Hurst is ninth right now, guys, in uh, the rankings in PPR amongst tight ends currently. I mean, the opportunity is there. We saw Hooper do really well with Matt Ryan. I think you know the Falcons' offense as a whole is going to be phenomenal this year. So I definitely see him having a good year. You know, it's going to be hard to pass guys like Kittle and Kelsey, but I mean, anything is possible. I was the guy who drafted Kittle when everyone's drafting Gronkowski a couple years ago in round one. So anything can happen. I think the ceiling is there. I think the offense is there, but that is a really bold prediction. I like it. She's steep. I mean, I'll be happy if he finishes top three, but I, I got to go for the stars here. I'm saying number one. All right. I got something here for you. Uh, and I got to talk about this guy. And I think the opportunity is huge for him. Everyone's talking about Clyde Edwards Lair. And I love Clyde Edwards Lair. He becomes more and more appealing to me because they haven't acquired it. Why are you giving a thumbs down to Clyde Edwards? I'm not drinking that Kool Aid. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather, I feel safer with Jacobs in round one. I've, I've stated this. I do offer Clyde Edwards Lair in the 16 rounds as an option there. But I say make sure you go with that robust RB strategy because, again, my concern is the rushing attempts. I don't know if he's going to get as many rushing attempts, as much volume as people are going to desire. In the back of my mind, there is some lingering free agents that maybe could end up there. I was talking to, if you guys aren't following Fan to Fan Network, I go to FTFN on YouTube or make sure you guys go to fantafannetwork.com, bookmark the page. I was talking to Ryan Tracy, our Chiefs ambassador, and he doesn't feel they're bringing a veteran like Freeman. Maybe he could be wrong, but he feels if there's a young free agent or someone like that that gets released, maybe they might pick up a young guy to compliment him as well. But uh, again, I like Clyde Rosler, but going back to the bold prediction here, I think Cam Akers could easily finish in the top 10 amongst running backs. Currently right now, the mainstream obviously sleeping on him as they typically do, sitting 25th amongst running backs. You know, behind guys like Mark Ingram, he's going to be sharing a committee with guys like Dobbins and Lamar Jackson, who is a quarterback but runs the ball. Chris Carson, who's just sitting at 17th, who's sharing the backfield with Hyde. Aaron Jones, who's now got Dylan there to contend with. So I really like Cam Akers as a guy that I think will run away with the job. Now, if you haven't heard, we were talking to our Rams rep again at FTFN. Uh, we were talking to Trent, and he was saying that basically Henderson was hurt. Cam Akers was getting a lot of the reps, looked pretty good. He feels that maybe Malcolm Brown's going to come out. You know, old Mr. Old and Reliable is going to come out for the first couple of drives, but it might be the Cam Akers show. I think he's just primed to have a good season. On an offense, it has proven that they can get uh, workhorse running backs and have them produce on a high level. What do you think of Cam, man? I know you're not as high on him as I am. Well, no, but that's that's perfect. I actually love right where his ADP is because I think you you shoot really high on a guy like Hilaire, and then if he doesn't meet expectations, you're pissed off. 
So right. having a guy like Akers going 25th, you said, or around the 25 mark, yeah. beautiful because it's easy for him to overdo that number, to come out and really shine and get the thousand yards rushing, put up 10 TDs and just kill it. So that is, to me, that's perfect. That's where you want to get one of these RB sleepers. Yeah, I mean, they got Malcolm Brown there, who, for a fantasy relevance, is not even relevant. He's sitting 66 on the rankings. I don't really trust Malcolm Brown. Again, Mr. Old Reliable going to get some good pass protection there for, uh, for the offense. But, I mean, at the end of the day, when you look at it, I think Cam is going to run away with that job. If they believed in Henderson, he would have been the guy. I'm all in on Cam Akers as my RB4 in a lot of leagues. I got him when I went robust RB confident and uh yeah man i got him finishing that's my bold prediction top 10 as a bold prediction i love him Sweet. yeah good though i like that so let me ask you a question here i want to go off on a little side tangent i'm just so i'm coming to you live from my bedroom and i'm looking around and i just saw this cbd oil what are your thoughts on cbd marijuana hemp whatever you want to say yeah, man, I'm not into that stuff. Why Why is this coming up it's, now? It's weird because my girlfriend's not for it at all either. Like she hates marijuana, hates the smell, hates everything to do with it. But we haven't been filming together for like a week, week and a half. And my back just wrecked, man. Like I did something right. at work, I twisted. It sucks getting old. So anyway, she knew I was in a ton of pain and she goes out of her way and gets me this CBD cream. They're like, what a sweetheart, man. She hates the stuff. Does it work? For me. And I'll tell you, like, I don't mind it. I'm 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 not a smoker. I don't really use this stuff either, but I put it on my back and I kind of like the smell. I know a lot of people say it's like <laughs> skunky in that, but this one was like a lemony citronella and marijuana smell. Kind of like it. Why doesn't she just massage you? Shouldn't that solve the problem? <laughs> well, she's willing to do that too. But you know, this was this was bad pain, man. This was like standing up like an old man, kind of hunched over. And I don't know that the CBD really helped. Like I'm more of a an A535 or um, a Voltron type guy, Voltaren, I should say. So I just, I don't know. I'm just looking around and I just wanted to talk to you about that. I never really got your thoughts on it. It's funny because I was dealing with that lower back injury because I was doing what my chiropractor called ballistic movements because I was doing the uh, the tire. And I was really aggressive with the tire and I was flipping it and it was a little too aggressive, but either way, my back is fine. I've been doing a lot of core strength training and stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, maybe if it works, let me know. Maybe I might need it for my back when I throw it out again. Yeah, that's the thing. I wouldn't say it was any better or any worse than some of the counter meds. Like I said, Voltaren or an A535. It's just, it's, you know, it's different strokes for different folks. And I just wanted to kind of throw that out there, get your take, get the fans take, you know, some people swear by this stuff. Other people are like, nah, man, it is Kool-Aid. Well, it lines up with what we're talking about, bold predictions. So my prediction, guys, leave a comment below. How many times do you think Tim and I will blow our backs out during the entire <laughs> NFL season? I'm really curious to get that feedback. Oh, it gonna... typically happens to me once every two years. So if it starts happening more than that, I'm going to be pissed off because you guys have jinxed me. We should do an over under us combined. Is it over five times or under five times combined? Remember, it's combined. Both and of us. I'm and how serious over. are we talking here? Are we talking like, yeah, like get up like an old man where you're hunched over and you got your hand on your back? It's just like discomfort, discomfort. Oh, or oh, discomfort. Well, that's every day for me. <laughs> I would take the over on that. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn, All right. just gave it away. All right. So All right, anyway, let's get back to this. So here's one that I'm going to dump on. I've dumped on him last time too. I know you're high on him. Todd Gurley. And I'm going super extreme here. I'm saying he finishes out of the top 20. Wow. No, you know what? I'm pissed off because I got him in round two in all my drafts. I'm all in <laughs> on this guy. So I hate you for this. And I'm going to throw your, I lost my pen here. I'm going to throw your back out right now. Yeah. <laughs> Pretzel me. The only concern with him is, and I don't think they're going to do it, is they limit him. That's the only concern because. I don't know though, because didn't one of our guys say that even in practices, he was limping a little and they seem to be holding him out, trying to preserve him. I'm not concerned. I think they run him through the season. But again, even through the season, I'm, there's this thought in my mind that, okay, maybe they're going to limit him to me. But I mean, the Rams kind of did that last year and they suffered because, you know, he did well near the end of this middle, mid to the end of the season. And they should have said, oh, man, we should have ran this guy because he's doing great. I think they're only limiting him in, you know, in the training camps. That same, similar to Dalvin Cook. And then we were talking to our Vikings guy at FTFN and he was saying, man, he's just been a little limited. Madison getting more of the reps. Obviously, for sheer preservation of these guys, you know, they, they are workhorse running backs. They're great talent, and they don't want to burn them and, and break them in training. So I think they're going to run both Dalvin Cook and Todd Gurley hard when the season starts. And I love Todd Gurley sitting 16th right now. 
This guy's a top five finisher wow. for me. Top Sitting five. 16th, I'm surprised. I didn't think he was that low. But yeah, it seems like a lot of people have been talking high about him, but then a lot of people have been dumping on him. I'm a dumper. I need to right. see it. All right, who's gonna blow out their knee? Uh, who, who's gonna blow out their back, knee or back? Which one's gonna happen more, Todd Gurley's knee or Tim's back during the season? Which one's gonna happen first? Oh man, Co- contact Vegas. Let's get some lines going on. <laughs> I think I think Tim blows his back week two. All Maybe, right. but I don't think so. Normally, like I say, it's a once every two year thing. So I, I think I got Gurley beat on this one. I got a bold prediction for you. I'm gonna call this one old is now new that's what i'm calling it now are we talking about adrian peterson old is new no no i think you know aaron Rodgers and ty hilton old veterans guys that did well back in like 2015 it's been like five years six years no i'd say four to five years since we saw a real solid production out of these guys ty i think had a good year at 2016 something like that either way hilton is now gushing or what a blushing or whatever that word is they use in the media about people when they're really happy about a person is it gush gushing about a person gushing, like, yes so he's really happy about philip rivers he's finally got a quarterback that can throw him the ball i think ty hilton has a great year and same with aaron Rodgers. when i say old is new these guys old veterans you know really good talent haven't really had you know, kind of fell off a little bit. Now, Aaron Rodgers still pretty good last year, just not to his pinnacle 40 touchdown season. I think both these guys bounce back in a strong way. So, bold prediction. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, top five quarterback, bold prediction. T.Y. Hilton, top 10 wide receiver amongst, you know, wide receivers in PPR. What do you think? I like it, man. I mean, I, I keep on saying too, like Aaron Rodgers to me just didn't look like the old Aaron Rodgers last year. It just seemed like something was off pretty much all year long. So I could yeah. definitely see him having a bounce back with more TDs. Like you say, that's, that's really what he needed. I don't think his numbers were horrible last year, but he needs a little more in the TD. TY I'm all in, man. I mean, I grabbed him in one of my drafts, really happy about getting him where I got him. I, I think he could produce too. And I, I'm a Philip rivers guy, like safe and boring. We talk about him all the time. Never really that exciting, but gets the job done. Right. All right. Do you have one for us here? Let's see. Where are we going to go here, man? Okay, so here's one that kind of got crapped on for me recently because in our last show that we did like this, I said Leonard Fournette finishes top two at RB. That ain't happening now. There's no doubt about it. However, still think top 10. Wow, really? Yep. I think he's going to take that job. I mean, who's there? Rojo? Give me a break. Yeah, I mean, Arians is full of crap, obviously, saying that Rojo is the starter. I mean, what a backhanded, like, it's just so, it's despicable what they've done to Ronald Jones. Obviously, no respect. Clearly, they're just going to probably put him out for maybe one drive because he said he's the starter. Yeah. He runs for, like, negative one yard or runs for two yards, and they bring in Leonard Fournette and start him ever ever after that. Just so Bruce Arians can say, well, I was right. I said he's the starter. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't believe any of that. I think Leonard Fournette does take that job. Although they do like throwing the ball a lot. You know, Bray likes to throw the ball. And, and Leonard can catch the ball, but is he that small scat back that kind of Brady's used to? No, not really. So maybe Ron Jones does get in, integrated. Maybe it's another Ingram Kamara from a couple of years ago type situation. I don't see enough volume for these guys to be both either one of these guys to be top 10. Maybe Fournette, but I think that's a bit of a long shot. Okay, remember why I was so high on Fournette was because his numbers in the receiving game did like explode last year. Uh, what did he have? 76 receptions or something. The two years before that, he was only at like 30 or something each year. So that's why I was so high on him this year. I saw him being used as the scat back, getting a lot of receptions, getting the runs, getting everything. Needed more touchdowns too. So I think... You kind of add all that together. You put him on this team. I still think he outshines Rojo no problem. I know 10's a little bold, maybe still, but I think it's doable. You know what is doable? I mean, I'm not a big James White fan, but we've seen Brady do some really cool stuff with James White, and obviously Fournette is more of a running back than James White. So, yeah, man, I, I can see that as long as he gets the volume, but Rojo and a couple other guys will be a thorn. We're going to have to see, but that's very, very interesting. Yep. So I got I got one here. I mean, right now, currently, we've got, who do we have here? We have Dalvin Cook sitting top five, and we've got Kenyon Drake sitting top 11 in PPR. So both these guys top 12. Bold prediction. And injury is included. Injury is included. (laughs) Don't come and tell me that Dalvin Cook got hurt, because I'm warning you right now. So both of these guys in the top 11, so I'll give them that top 10, top 10, top 12, right? So everyone's all over Kenyon Drake. Everyone's all over Dalvin Cook. Both these guys 
injury included, don't give me this. Both of these guys finish outside the top 20 in fantasy PPR amongst running backs. Man, you love to dump on Cook. And Drake. I don't like these guys. I mean, I mean, Drake, I, Drake I can get a little more, but Cook, man, I don't see it. I don't know why you hate this. I, I don't like him for fantasy. He's a snake. You, you know, he's one of those guys. He's kind of like Odell. You know, people draft him in the first round three years in a row and three years in a row he busted. And he's still in the top three. He has no business being ahead of Landry after busting three years in a row, but he's a name. And Cook is great talent. There's no doubt about it, but he's a system running back. And a, a lot of his success is predicated on the, on the offensive line and that offense. So he's in a great situation, and that is what he's the, the, his success, right? So we're going to have to see this year. And I was talking again to the Vikings guy on our virtual tailgate. And guys, make sure you guys follow Fan to Fan Network on YouTube, FTFN, every Sunday. Thursday and Friday before games, we do a, a tailgate, a virtual tailgate. So our Vikings guy was saying, man, we talked about this. It's a make or break year for Dalvin Cook. So he didn't, I think he didn't, I think they offered him like nine or 10 million. He didn't take it. And that's being greedy. If he breaks his leg week two, which I think he will, he just shot himself in the foot. He, you know, make or break figuratively and literally speaking here. Yeah. It, it's a risk when these guys do that, but you know, they, they don't look at themselves as being injured or injury prone. Right. They're going to come out. They're going to have a killer year. They're going to earn their big dollars. That's what they want to do. So he's willing to take the risk. And yeah, God forbid something bad happens to him and he's he's out for the majority of the year, half the year. He's not going to get that mega contract. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not sold on Dalvin Cook. So yeah, Kenyon Drake and Dalvin Cook, injury included. And don't say because he got injured. Both finish out of the top 20. And maybe throw in Nick Chubb in there too, because I'm not sold either. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sold on him. We talk about that till we're blue in the face. Man, there's a bold prediction for you. Have an open discussion. Kareem Hunt finishes ahead of Nick Chubb in PPR fantasy once by the end of the season. I'm just not sold on Nick Chubb. And what's sad now he's sitting 14th, but that still makes him a late first round, early second round pick. The thing that bothers me, Tim, so much about Nick Chubb, honestly, is the fact that they are kind of um, weighing him, they're putting the weight on him and factoring him in as kind of like where he finished last year. And they're kind of thinking, well, Kareem Hunt's not going to be there for the first 10 weeks. That's kind of like the mentality. Well, Kareem Hunt is there from week one. Yep. And the excuse that I hear all the time is, well, they got Stefanski there and he ran Dalvin Cook last year with the Vikings. Stefanski is going to run him. He loves him. And I get that, but it doesn't make, like, I, I can't imagine Kareem Hunt just being on the bench. I don't see it. This, this is a 50-50 committee, no matter how you slice it, man. These guys are both very capable running backs, but they're also right there neck and neck in their abilities. So one guy is going to run the ball hard. The other guy is going to be more of a catching back. It's it's a 50-50, guys. I think that uh, Chubb is going way too high as well. I think this is a good, strong team. It was it was pretty good, strong team last year, and they did crap. But there's just way too many weapons here. This is not going to be the old uh, Camara was it Camara Ingram. Ingram. From three, four years ago, it's not going to be the same deal, man. Now, now be careful when you say 50 50. I still think Nick Chubb gets whatever 60 40. I don't care. Uh, Someone's going to be a little lead. But in PPR points, 50 50 by the end of the game because because that's what we saw in the trend of the, the the weeks they played together, right? The eight weeks, they, it was like a 50 50 split. Some games, it was like 14 points for Hunt, you know, 14 points for Chubb. And where Kareem Hunt was making those points was. You know, I think he had a receiving touchdown or two and was in the receptions and the yardage with receiving. So yeah. it, it's a split in regards to fantasy points the way we saw it last year. So I don't really buy into recency bias, but in this case, I'm just not sold on Cream Hunt sitting on the bench. So, okay. so there you have it, man. That's what we thought. Any other bold predictions? This, you want this to talk brings about? me into my next one. <laughs> I was a Baker guy last year and I got bit. Yeah. I'm do it again. Not really. I, I haven't drafted him and I wouldn't draft him, but... As a bold prediction with the team he's got around him, top five finisher. Oh, you're nuts. You're <laughs> nuts. I have no. I mean, yeah, baby. Come yeah. on. He's He's got a team. He's got weapons. He's got receivers. He's got running backs. He's got it all. I got to talk got about everything. something here. I'm just throwing something in the garbage I missed. I have a garbage bin right beside me. And like when I throw something out, I, I always shoot. It's almost point blank. It's not that far. And I miss every single time. Anyway. Oh, basketball is not thing. Miss every time, kind of like Odell and fantasy three years in a row. <laughs> right. So listen, so here's how I feel about this. Now, here's what pisses me off. And I got to tell you, this pisses me off significantly. And that's why, you know, my audience is so much bigger now on Instagram and everything like that. And we're getting bigger. And I'm so grateful that the audience is bigger and people are starting to realize. Last year, 
people thought I was crazy. Joey, you're crazy. You have, and this is why I hate the consensus so much. I said Josh Allen is going to be better than Baker Mayfield. Everyone's like, Joe, you're nuts. Put this guy in a straight jacket. Everybody had Baker Mayfield. I remember the rankings clear as day. I could hold on. Let me pull up my magazine here. One sec. Here. I'm going to pull up a magazine. We're not in a rush. You don't got nowhere to go. Pulling up my trusty magazine here. I'm going to see where Baker Mayfield was sitting here in this magazine. First of all, Odell was first amongst wide receivers in this one. Okay. I'm going to pull up here. Uh, one second. This is 2018 magazine. I'm going to show you guys if you're on YouTube. It's an illustrated magazine. I won't say which one. <laughs> you guys know what illustrated that is. I want to see where Baker, first of all, running backs. I'm looking at this. It's, it's embarrassing. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to tell you where Baker was. So Baker was actually second. I want to show this to you guys on YouTube. Are you, can you see this, Tim? Is it clear? Is it in focus? I can see the first one is Mahomes. Yep. Mayfield. Can you see Baker Mayfield number yep. two? And he was top five in the ranking. So I'm going to pull this up here. I'm going to show you guys here on screen. Baker Mayfield number two in this magazine. Okay. So everybody called me crazy last year. Like, oh my God, how could you say um, Josh Allen over ba Baker Mayfield? How could you do that, Joe? And now I'm looking at it. Josh Allen is seventh amongst quarterbacks. So why is everybody riding his dick now? Why? Well, because he performed well last year. Why didn't you see that? When when near the end of the 2018 season, if you project those numbers out, I was looking at it. Allen was doing better than Mayfield. So going into the season, everyone's always oh, got Odell Landry. Yeah, Baker Mayfield's a top two, top five. I'm like, you're crazy, man. He, you know, pump the brakes on this one. So again, I'm not sold on Baker Mayfield. I mean, maybe this is year, but I'm not paying it. Not doing yeah, it. My, my whole thing last year was Mayfield had great weapons. Coming out of college, he had... He had like phenomenal numbers for yards yes. thrown, passes complete, and everything. Last year was the exact opposite. He had yeah, horrible numbers. Yeah, I don't care about this asshole. <laughs> Fantasy, I, he's a snake, man. This, this one is like super bold, man, and I don't, I don't even truly believe it's going to happen. But I think he's going to have a pretty damn good year. All right, I got a super bold prediction for you. Super duper, uh, over the moon, top bold crazy you're nuts out of your crazy skull bold prediction I, I don't think this is gonna happen but drew Locke, who's currently sitting 25th amongst quarterbacks finishes top five in quarterbacks in fantasy points that that's is bold, bold brother that's bold that is bold bold i'm not, bold. I'm not high on lock at all i just i don't know we met him at the the show there even and i just i don't like him i don't get the vibe from him he's got too many good options for him not to succeed. Melvin Gordon out of the backfield, Cortland Sutton, big red zone target. Noah Fane catches the ball. They got the top prospect uh, at a college at wide receiver, Jerry Judy, polished route runner, uh, decent O-line. I don't know, man. I don't, I, I'm don't. i seeing the good things happening here with Drew Locke. Just I hope it works out for him. I honestly do. I mean, I don't wish anybody bad in a career that they've worked so hard for, but I'm, I'm not impressed with the guy in any way at all. Tim, why is are you in like a nightclub? You got like a strobe. It, it, yeah, it seems to be strobing. I don't know. Yours was like um, yours was buffering almost. Yours was pausing earlier. Now I'm strobing. But oh, no, cool. I'm not in a nightclub. Although it is the bedroom, so <laughs> it's yeah, a nightclub maybe. already. <laughs> Different kind of club. All right. Well, either way, we're pretty much wrapping it up here anyway. But we wanted to give you the strobe uh, light effect here with Tim. Ooh, Just <laughs> we need some club music. Hold on, ready? All right. Wow, that's, not, that's not nightclub music. All right, Tim. <clears throat> All right. So, any other things you really see? Give me a super. Let's do it. Let's do another Super Bowl prediction, like a Super Bowl. Super Dude, bold. Baker Mayfield finishing top five is as super bold as I can get. I want one more. I want one okay, more. Well, super we already kind of talked about this guy, and you're you're fairly high on him. I'm not. I actually wrote down Clyde Edwards Hilaire finishes 16th place in RBs. 16. Wow. I'm being specific and exact. 16th Who came up with this? Why? What's the justification? I don't, for I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. I'm not <laughs> high on him. I don't think he's going to be as good as everybody says. And I just wanted to put a specific number on it. I heard he's doing really good, man. I heard he's doing really good. Now, I'm not really like over the top you know, gushing over the guy. I think I'm, it's one of those things kind of like the way I feel about drew lock, except I don't have to spend, you know, as much draft capital to get yeah. Drew lock. Obviously it's kind of like that. Okay. He's young. He's talented. The situation's primed. Oh my God, this guy could really hit the moon. Uh, you know, that type of feeling, but yeah, man, I mean, I'm going robust RB, so I'm good either way if I get him, 
But yeah, I mean, he's coming off six overall, man, ahead of even guys like Josh it's Jacobs. A, it's a steep price to pay on a on a chance. I was in the best ball league, which is PPR driven, and I and I get it. He came off before Derrick Henry. I got Derrick Henry ninth in that league. No, hmm. tenth. I got Derrick Henry tenth. I'm like, you know what? It's PPR, but Derrick Henry's here at ten. I'm like, I gotta get him. And then I then I Jacobs got sniped after me, so I got Gurley in two. But hey, man, it is what it is. <laughs> So yeah. I'm just not on the Clyde Edward Edward Hilaire. It, it could happen. He could be that top guy. He could put up massive numbers. I don't think so. I think he's going to be a mid range running back. All right. I'm going to give you one more super duper crazy uh, bold prediction. Ready? Yeah. Ready for this? Are you ready for this, dude? Dude, dude. Oh, that's the old uh, 90 stuff. Don't mind. All <laughs> yeah. right. So Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson, wide receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers, finishes top five amongst wide receivers in PPR. Deontay Johnson. Damn, man, that is steep. But you know what? Nobody, nobody is talking about Juju. I know. I don't like him. There's, I don't no, like him. Type, there's no negative talk. There's no nothing. It's just like Juju's there and nobody cares. I don't like paying a third round pick for a guy that busted last year and they've got talent around him and Claypool and Johnson. I, I don't like him. I don't like Juju. I don't like his antics on the camera. He's always having fun dancing. You know, I don't know if you saw the one where he's wearing like tight spandex and you could see his junk and he's dancing. You didn't Can't see that say I did, but damn, I wish I didn't miss it. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> all right it's funny the comments on that video were crazy like yeah it looks like a worm but in a couple <laughs> minutes it'll be a snake and all this time oh, <laughs> like, oh, king cobra because you can see the texture it's pretty disgusting i don't want to see it like i don't need to see it juju get on the field and play goddamn football man okay, yeah we're talking about juju's junk way too much too much all right so anyway um juju Third round, not doing it. Uh, yeah, I mean, he should put on some clothes and focus on football. That's what I guess. So, so you're saying Deontay finishes before Juju, well before. Yeah, you. yeah, I think so. I, I think so. That's my bold prediction. Well ahead of him, and I can get him, at, you know, after the seventh round. So I, I'm, I'm going Deontay. And I like Claypool as a late stash as well. Yeah, right on, man. I want that Steelers fantasy football stock for sure. Yeah. Yep. So that's it, Tim. We're going to come back Thursday. We should do a preview show Thursday. Uh, ramp it up for Thursday night football, Thursday morning, whether it be on stream or in person. It doesn't matter to me. The audio listeners can't even tell because they can't see us, Tim. They just hear our magical voices. Our beautiful and they hear me describing my bedroom with the hemp oil and the screen <laughs> controller. Look how tranquil it is there. Now he's got the strobe light. Now going. my girlfriend's got this beautiful, you know, inspirational saying behind can me. You, can you, before we go, leave our listeners with uh, that motivate. Can you read that wisdom? I don't know, because I'm trying to read backwards here. So uh, wisdom from the ocean. Ooh, that's all I can make out from here. I'm, I'm old. Hold on, hold on. All right. Continue. <laughs> okay, let's read the motivate. No, turn around. Read the story. Okay. Can you read? Wisdom from the ocean. See life's beauty. Don't be crabby. Come out of your shell. Take time to coast. Go with the flow. Do what floats your boat. Don't get tied down. Soak up positive energy and be sure of yourself. There you have it. <laughs> yeah. <I'm gonna> have <laughs> that was the least motivational speech I've ever heard. I tried read, to put on my smooth voice. Read by the least motivational person I've ever met. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right, that's enough for that. All right, guys, make sure you guys subscribe. Leave a thumbs up and your fantasy questions below. And, uh, yeah, don't break your back this weekend. Yes, Here take you care of your back because it, it's necessary. Or this week. This week. I keep thinking it's the weekend because it's a long weekend. I'm stuck in the weekend. That's it. All right, guys, we're out. Smash thumbs up. Helps the channel and subscribe. We go year-round. Man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. The season's here. We'll talk soon. Dino Mike. All right. Where's our outro music? We need our outro music. We're out. That's more of an intro music. We'll talk soon. <laughs>